What's up and welcome to another episode of Action Figure Prop Shop. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make mini comic books and a comic book box for your action figures. Alright, so kicking it off, I scoured the internet looking for pictures of the comic book covers that I wanted. Found a bunch of different ones, scaled them down to about the size that I thought was right for action figures, and compiled them all into a Word document. Then I transferred it over to a thumb drive, went down to the copy shop, and had them printed out on cardstock. And I don't do the exact math from scaling it down from actual size to 112 scale. I kind of just eyeball it, and if it looks good, it's legit. Alright, so I got all my comic book covers cut out. Now your next step is going to be to grab a black sharpie, and you're going to want to hit up all the edges of every cover. You don't want to see those white outer edges on your comic book cutouts, if you have posters in your dioramas, or any type of paper prop. It's going to take away from the shot. It's going to make the prop not look as real. So just hit it up real quick with a Sharpie. Try to do it as neat as you can. That way you don't mark up the cover. And don't sit too long with the marker because it will soak in. It will bleed. So just hit it up real quick, nice and neat. And it's going to make it look that much better. So your next step is going to be trying to find the internal pages of your comic book. So for this, I got some free preview comics, some freebies, some thrift store comics, and some scrap magazines. So what I'm looking for is like little pictures and really fine print. So that way, if you happen to see inside the comic, it's going to look a little more believable with pictures in scale of what the cover looks like. So usually the free preview comics are going to be the best because they're going to have those little pictures of the comic book covers. And they're going to have actual pages from the comic book scaled down. So I'm going to use some of those. And then some old school comics, you know, that have those wacky ads like x-ray glasses or become a beefcake in five minutes kind of thing. So you can see this is some of the stuff I found. Just smaller printed comics, small magazine and comic book covers and just small little ads that are gonna be similar to scale of the comic book covers that I printed out. And you could totally skip this step. I mean, you could find comic book pages, scale those down to the cover size, and print those out and use those. I just like the paper they use for comic books and magazines. And two, this is just scrap stuff I have sitting around waiting to be cut up and used, so. So I found this little mini comic book page. I'm gonna use one of the covers and trace that out in pencil. And then I'm gonna cut that out, and I'm gonna try to get as many comic book pages as I can out of this little page. So I got lucky and found some mini Transmetropolitan pages, and I had happened to print out Transmetropolitan comic book covers, so now I get to make a couple Transmetropolitan mini comics. And I'm going to be using super glue to assemble the comics. It dries quick, and the little nozzle on here makes it really easy to use with small projects like this. <laughs> comic book's all dry, I'm going to go ahead and grab some scissors and trim up the outer edges just to make sure none of the pages are sticking out. And boom! Got yourself a mini comic. So I went ahead and made a grip of different comics. And like I said, I don't really go with a set measurement for something like this. It's kind of just I eyeball it. If it looks good, then it's legit. But if you were curious about the exact measurements, it's 2.1 centimeters across and 3.2 centimeters tall. And now for the comic book box. So I kind of just sketched it out based on the comic book size, and then I wrote the measurements down just in case you wanted to copy my measurements. So here it is. So it's going to be 12 centimeters across this way, 9.5 centimeters across this way. So these side walls right here, they're all going to be 3.6 centimeters. So the front and the back facing should be 3.6 centimeters. I wrote 3.5, but it's the same height as the sides, so it should be 3.6. So each little rectangular tab, I measured them in at 0.4 centimeters, but I'd probably recommend going like 0.5, that way you have a little bigger tab to glue them together. And the sides are about 5.8 across, and that's including the little tabs on both sides. So these measurements are probably really wacky, but like I said, I usually just eyeball everything and go off what I think looks the best. I just wrote down the measurements just to help you guys out. If it helps you out. It might confuse you. I don't know. So I got my box all cut out and folded. And now it's time to glue it. So the material I'm using for the comic book box is like this little cardboard slip sheet. So one side looks all cardboardy. The other side's like white and glossy. I think I found it in a three pack of vinyl record frames. It came slipped in between them so the glass didn't get all jacked up. But you could probably use like cheap comic book boards or pretty much anything that's white. Cardstock. Anything like that will probably work.
for the comic book box lid. You can see it's 6.7 centimeters across, 4.1 centimeters tall, and I did 0.5 centimeters for the little lip of the box lid. We got it cut and folded. Let's glue this on, bitch. lids dry and your little comic book box is complete start loading it up with comic books and get your collection going and if there's any excess like didn't cut it right or the measurements are too long just cut the excess so it all looks uniform thanks for watching this episode of action figure prop shop if you have any questions any suggestions for future videos definitely hit me up in the comments subscribe check out some of the videos and we'll see you next time